Okay. Okay. So I'd like to call this meeting of Monday, April 22nd of the Needham Board of Assessors to order. Uh, first item on the agenda, approved minutes of prior meetings. I think we've got two meeting uh, minutes to, to approve. Uh, and but I want to welcome Michael Diener first uh, to the board. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Diener. Thank you. And which, uh, I do not have copies, which two uh, meetings? Oh, that's okay. Four eight and four one. Okay, so we have meetings. Uh, Mike and I were in attendance, so we will uh, vote on these after satisfactory to you. Yes. If they are, then I would entertain a motion by you to uh, approve the minutes of April 1st and April 8th. So moved. And I will second that. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain on the basis that I wasn't present. Fine. And thank you. And haven't watched the totality. Okay. Yet. Did you get that, Melissa? I did. Thank you. Okay. Okay. okay next I Put item. behind the copies, down, please. Um, we have no members of the public in attendance to acknowledge. Thank you. You're welcome. The, the only participant I see is this, uh, that us online. Somebody come in? No. That would just be us. That would be us. Um, so we don't. Okay. This is a public meeting. This is one of the public, public yeah, meetings. We're in a public meeting. Um, so usually we'll have lines of people waiting. Yes, I, I don't know what that's about today. It's you know, you, I, it's your, your, your family didn't come. I was to, waiting for. Uh, I know, I know. Um, the parade. Uh, we have on the agenda election of chair, vice chair, and secretary. Um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, to reelect John as chair for two reasons. <laughs> One, we have. Um, I need to recuse myself for um, for one exemption for South Street. And so that could take me out for a couple of meetings for sure. Uh, but also we're coming up on the reevaluation every five years. Um, John has experience with that um, on the select board side. And I think he's in best shape to Field the questions, be prepared, and um, get this through in a fast and timely manner. Thank you. Uh, then I would call for nominations for chair. I nominate John Boolean. Okay. And I'm also going to ask nominations for vice chair. Um, with that, you know, you I'm fine with that. Okay. I would nominate Mike Knighton for vice chair. Secretary Mike Diener. I will nominate Mike Diener for secretary. And normally we go in kind of a revolving. Yeah. So uh, with that, we've got the three uh, of closed nominations and ask for a motion to uh, approve the chair, vice chair, and secretary uh, nominations. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, we have unanimous vote. Got that, Melissa? Just one yep. sec. Okay. We're also known as the fastest board. And the slowest writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've already completed the meeting. I, I don't know what that's. <laughs> but we're still being, we're still in public session. Um, you have on here, we have on here, scheduled date and time for the next six meetings. Yes. Are we prepared to do that? I would like to do that because it's far easier to schedule a meeting and have to cancel it than it is to schedule it close to the meeting time. Okay. I think it's a great idea, personally. Okay. What is the what is the nature of our uh, for the next? You know, do we need six more six meetings right now to deal with? How, you know, how many abatement uh, applications do we have yet to uh, act on? We have probably. Probably about a dozen that need to be voted on that are total in total remaining. Well, there's there's closer to 30 total. There are 
full list of commercial ones that we're going to review that okay. um, we may be able to get to before the deadline. And the others are residential that I think we should be able to get to. I mean, my question is, do you see a need that we'll have for six more meetings right now in this session? Well, I'm thinking six meetings being the next six weeks or so. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any consequence. Okay. Anyway, we can Bye. always cancel it. Um, should we just then schedule the next six meetings on the next six Mondays at 9.15? That would be perfect. Mike, a consistent day and time is ideal. Uh, Mike Knight and Mike I, I, I'm, I'm checking right now. I'll be hence known as Mike Bull again. Um, we'll just keep it simple. So next Monday is the 29th. And yeah, we check those for um, conflicts. Well, I mean, there aren't any morning. Well, I mean, my holiday. Oh, holidays, it would be Memorial Day. The only one would be Memorial Day, and that might interfere with the. Uh, which days? We can always reschedule. Right. Uh, so we've got the 29th, the 6th, the 13th, and the 20th. Memorial Day is probably the 27th. It probably is. Melissa, do you want to schedule four meetings right now and just and then see <laughs> where we are? I'd rather just get all done no, and then we fine. can cancel. Okay. I was going to suggest why don't we just say the next whatever Monday. Next however many Mondays. Mondays it is up till Memor before Memorial, Memorial Day. Not it's four. Memorial right. Day. Memorial Day is the 27th. What's the right. downside of, of scheduling after Memorial Day? Nothing. It's just, I, I, I'm just, you know, based upon last year's experience, I don't know that we have a need for to even put it on the schedule and cancel it. I just don't think, you know, or is, we don't. Is there a it. negative impact? Yeah, because we could end up doing, skipping a week, okay, giving. Um, right, we can still do that. Okay, uh, so you you look then to schedule the 3rd and the 10th of June as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, 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 I'd rather get it done and scheduled. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. okay. Uh, and, and what's the big deal about canceling something as long as we there do? isn't? It's sim it's simple to cancel. It's difficult to schedule right. close to the meeting date. Okay. Because has, I have to schedule Zoom, the room, um, and the postings and all that stuff when it's close to the time the rooms get used up yeah um you know they're they're taken and so we have to scramble for a place to go and which is why we were upstairs at one point there was one week we were going to have to be at PSAB, but it turns out i was able to find another room and what's the deadline to cancel um, 20 uh you can cancel up until, it up until up the, until the, the meeting the itself meeting itself yeah. okay all right so there's virtually no okay okay so what i want to do is make a motion to uh to schedule six meetings as follows um on all on mondays all at 9 15 start time on april 29th may 6th may 13th may 20th can you slow down i'm sorry let's do it again okay april 29th yep may 6th may 13th may 20th june 3rd june 10th <laughs> give, me, give me those last ones again june 3rd june 10th <laughs> <laughs> Shepard, um, I really like his wife. <laughs> yeah. I believe it was June third, June tenth, and June tenth. Um. So, are, are we still on? Yeah, we are. We're connected. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, so do I have a motion? Bye. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Welcome. Um, any other business to probably come before the board before we go into executive session? Um, no, this doesn't have to be. So I have some information for you all, which is probably redundant, but nevertheless, um, these are all of the I, I did this since we have a number of months. We'll see if I did. This is all of the relevant documentation for exemptions and what the requirements are and what the uh, income and asset levels are. Oh, this is great information. There's some information that we have on the website. There's a taxpayer's guide to local property tax exemptions for seniors. And 
believe um, DPA surcharge exemption requirements. Um, there's a an informational sheet. What is the Community Preservation Act and how does it impact my taxes? And the Town of Needham exemption information, which is a four page handout that we have. So this is great. Uh, yeah. Just a question: How how does the CPA um, affect the assessors? Um, it affects with respect to exemptions, so people can apply for specifically for a CPA exemption, and there are um, criteria for that. That's interesting okay. here as well. So there are times when you will be voting on an exemption for CPA only. How often does that come up? I, we haven't seen that so far. Right, we, haven't. we haven't. There's a very small number of people that fall into that category because if, for instance, somebody um, applies for an elderly exemption and is granted, they automatically get a CPA exemption for that oh, same amount. Okay, I didn't know that. So the CPA is a surcharge on a tax. So when you exempt the tax, then you, by definition, have to exempt the surcharge, the surcharge. on the tax. So that's automatically done, and it's not a separate vote because that's part of the statute. But there are situations where people don't qualify for these other exemptions, but they do qualify for the CPA exemption. So in those cases, they'll apply separately and they'll vote separately. So on a million dollars, what is the effect of that exemption? Oh, don't make me think of that. <laughs> it's a percentage of the tax. So 2% of the tax. It is 2% of whatever the tax is. Right. So right. we could calculate so that. It's a small amount. Okay. Um, we can calculate that. Yeah, been, well, in, in preparation for this, I have been familiarizing myself, at least with the categories. Yeah. But trying to understand the difference from all the different types and which yes. ones have residency requirements and residency in the town mm -hmm. versus, the, I think it's, it's it, it would take, it's like with those anatomy classes where mm -hmm. you memorize everything. So I'm at, least, I'm at least trying to make myself familiar with yeah. all the categories, elderly, yeah. veteran, you know, child of, of uh, police, mm -hmm. uh, various things like that. And I figure so we back. have a look it up when we need it. And we <laughs> have a handy dandy chart. Well, this yeah, also is great. But what you gave us also is specific because a lot of these are local option, right? Correct. So this is all specific to Needham? Yes. Or is a state level? No, nope, that's state. it. That's Needham. Okay, great. And in answer to Mr. Knighton's question, approximately $250 is CPA on a $1 million property, a resident, okay. residential right. property. Okay. Okay. And and then for informational purposes, um, we are tracking the activity at the window between the hours of 12.30 and 5 p.m. on Fridays to see what amount of activity we have. Um, that's at the direction of um, the HR department. And so in addition, we are also voluntarily tracking for our own internal purposes, the telephone activity between those hours as well. So just so you know, we're doing that. Um, there's some question about making the summer hours permanent throughout the year. So this survey that we've been asked to do for activity at the window is to give some information as to whether or not that is a good idea. So that would be half day Fridays? Um, yeah, there's a proposal to, to do the half day Fridays all year instead of just during the summer. For the entire town hall? For the entire town hall, for the entire year. Other towns are doing that because I call a lot of them. And some don't even work Fridays. So this does, is not unusual. Does that mean then that our department is open what evenings? Um, it has been Tuesday evenings. Okay. And so the summer hours is that we open earlier each day and then work on Tuesday evening till seven. What time do we open? Um, we then summer hours would be eight o'clock instead of eight thirty. Okay. And so the hours end up the same, but the schedule is yep. a little different. And there's some question about how we would do it if it were permanent, whether that would change whether Tuesday would be different or we'd do it another night later. There's some discussion about that. So if the 
if the number of hours don't change, mm -hmm. the the financial impact sounds like it's not going to change. Correct. So then why are we making things more constrictive? What is is it for the benefit of the taxpayer or is it for the benefit of the town? Um of the, of the well, town employees. I'll well, say yeah, town employees. I'll say that this whole discussion is not specific to assessing. It's to the whole town hall. Yeah, right. And we're in open session right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the question of activity was a directive to us, to all of the departments, to um, document our activity so that there would be some data collected to help in making that decision. That's okay. not our decision to make. But a question for relative to our department mm -hmm. is the abatement applications are and filings are due in, in January, Correct. by February 1st. Mm -hmm. Are we open any evenings in January um, to accommodate any uh, you know, so that I, I guess what I'm getting at is, you know, I, I think January is a particularly potential, busy, and important, statutorily important dating for this department. So mm -hmm. that um, I, I guess, you know, doing a Friday afternoon tracking is irrelevant. I'd want to know what that looks like in January for our department. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is it, it, I and are we available I, any evenings in January to accommodate any taxpayer requests relative to abate, the abatement process? I mean, we've got statutory timelines mm -hmm. that we have to deal with that most other departments don't. Mm -hmm. um, so we do not currently have evening hours during January. Only That's during the summer. Correct, which so if we move to summer hours throughout the year, mm -hmm. we would then have them. Then there would be at least one night. One night every week. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, can you elaborate what, what the summer hours are? It's, it's oh. Friday afternoons are off, but to one. But they add Tuesday evening. And have, everybody comes in at 8 a.m. Monday through Thursday. Yes. Uh, and fr Friday, I guess, too. Monday right. through Friday. So it's half day, half day Friday and then later, earlier hours all week. Correct. Half day Friday. And then an evening and Tuesday Tuesday, evening. Tuesday for Tuesday. a couple hours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Two and a half. I don't see any benefit to the taxpayer, to the need and resident. I see a constriction on that. It doesn't matter. This is not a debate. Right. But mm -hmm. I I just personally um I can't see one retail store closing on Friday and it benefiting them. I mean, you're just losing. I, I, I guess not to, you know, that what we wouldn't be doing and don't need to do is get too broad. Our, no, right. our discussion should be right. solely focused on right. our department and the needs and, and any other statutory, you know, uh, elements that relate to it. Mm -hmm. I can see this working for us in January because it would give people a couple of two and a half extra hours every week for the four weeks to do business. But are there people that have come in to see you Friday afternoons in January for the department and talk about uh, abatement applications? And so we, I think for us, we want to be particularly cognizant of that. We don't have a way of tracking that right now because the next window opens January 1st and closes February 1st. Sure. Well, I guess one potential, I mean, it's a very small yeah. you know, benefit to the public, which would be having evening hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If someone's working nine to five, five yeah. days a week, yeah. Friday was no better than any other day. Right. But Tuesday evening or 8 a.m. Right. might accommodate people for whom it would be harder to do just another nine to five right. afternoon. So I can see that. And I guess the only other potential, if you want, it's an indirect taxpayer benefit, but things to keep the employees happier and, right. and, and, and work for help with retention. You know, obviously has a oh, it's a hard to quantify as as a collective town wide. I always yeah. looked at that as a, as a positive. Yeah, exactly. Okay, expanding it. I don't have an issue with that. I'm now just looking focused on our department and right. what does it mean to us. You know, do you get much in the way of uh, do you get people that come in to meet with you when, how often, or other members of the team? And you know, would an evening having an evening open? I know it would be mandated, but as part of this process. Um, 
but you know, how does this affect us? And um, what type of traffic do you get in January? I guess I should go to that. We never tracked it before. That's what the study's for. Well, but the study isn't going to help January. No, but I, I don't think you're going to see a huge change in pattern. Well, yeah, you will. Because the only time you have the window, it opens January 1st and closes February 1st for abatement filings, residential abatement. Right, but therefore, any other month of the year has no bearing on anything. Okay. Other than people collecting information. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, it would seem to me that if the, if, if, if the town goes through this, if it turned out that the Friday is like right at the end, you know, like right. February 1 or January 31st, then we might want to make some arrangement. That right. Someone could be there. So I think all you have to do is stamp it in, right? I don't, or maybe for questions too. But at least you know, if there was some way to stamp in. Shit or so or no, it will be there. Postmark. Well, postmark yeah. action, but... right? I guess I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, but that's a very, yeah. that's a very narrow thing. I mean, yeah. I would think like with that last. What type day. of Melissa? So I mean, do you recall last January what type of traffic you got, and you know how many abatement applications did we get this past January? In we total? got a total of fifty-seven. Okay. And do you recall over over the month of January, sort of generally? As best you can recall, well, you've got the date stamped. So, yeah, when did they they all come in at the end? Um, well, except except I think they're. Oh, okay. since I was just reading, I've been just reading this. Yeah, but you were supposed to stamp in the time, but also the method of of receipt. So, okay, fax, email, yeah, um, yeah. by hand, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it's it's always the last guy who read the read the rules. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Who's the most? Guy? That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. So I was just because I was just reading that it said because it's specifically because Mike and I've been on the sport for years. I've been writing the rooms for a long time. Yeah. So, uh, well, we can always go back and you know, take a look at that. Right. I, I I think it's it's worth you know having a discussion about a not like you know I mean because because like I said it, it just it doesn't really help this department you know January's our month. Yeah. Yeah. January's well, the, the month. You could. Put a cat. We could recommend a caveat that if um, it has to be in by January thirtieth, right, or February first. February first. So if, like with the taxes, IRS, if it falls on a holiday, it goes to the next right day. That, that um, I think that's true. We are we are bound by the statute. This is not something we can choose. Right. And the rule is it needs to be here on. The date that the tax bill is due at the close of business. Which so if we is close, it, close of business. If we close at 12, then it's 12. If we close at five, it's five. If it's, we close at seven, it's seven. I, I thought there was a provision that kicks over. So Friday the first is is a uh, Sunday. Um, is well, we wouldn't we wouldn't make the bill due on a Saturday or Sunday. Oh, oh, they set the date based. Oh, they do look at that. Okay, right, but it's not the bill. It's the abatement. If the abatement deadline is the date that the bill is due. Yeah. Okay. So it's okay. generally February first. But could it be February second? It's it could be anything, but it's generally February first. Um, but but you say that they they do move they do change the date based on whether it falls on a week. I mean, there are a lot right. of things that have deadlines that just fall on a day, and then yeah. they say what well, like like your federal taxes falls on the fifteenth, mm -hmm. but the fifteenth is a mm -hmm. Is uh, a Sunday. Sunday, it kicks to Monday, and in Massachusetts, it usually kicks to Tuesday because of. I, I guess I just want to be the only thing that I'm concerned about is it falling on a Friday. Right. And, like we just, and the town hall happens to close at noon, and people in their working regular lives are going to be like, I mean, it's closed at noon, and I guess the deadline right. is going to drop, you know. Why don't, so, well, why don't we just. It sounds like this is still something in the works. Right. Yeah. I think and, that should and, be and we have fed a, back. We have, just... eight, we have eight months to deal with it. So why don't we wait and see if the town does go with it? And then let's see what the date is. And if it does line up, let's just talk to the town about the, that. Their discussion should, some should take of, into account yeah. anything like this that's right. very yeah. that's 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 yeah. governed by state statute. So because every five years there'll be a hiccup on a weekend. The yeah. next um, next January, I mean next February. It's Friday. Right? 
Um, or is, or is that it Thursday? On a Saturday, I believe. So in that case, the bill would likely be due on February 3rd. Yeah. And then only if the ground. You know, I might, I might have misspoken on that. So let's, why don't I get some more information? Uh, okay. I think for the rest of the town hall, it doesn't matter. But right. It does for right. Us. right. Yeah. And it, well, they may have other things where it matters at a particular way. Right. The clerk's office might have something too, where you're right. so, something done. But for us, it, but it really is only going to be, I mean, if the due date is on a Wednesday, we right. probably we probably don't even care about the Friday. So this is right. like this is like something that would come up every other right. every every five probably, every it's, few years. It just yeah. needs to be discussed. Yeah, and sure. and, and considered in the decision to make the summer hours permanent. How do we share yeah. that with human resources? You'll share it. I'm sorry. You want me to share it? If you would like me to do so, then I'm. I would need something from the board to present to them. I don't think we have enough information yet. I think we need one more. Well, next meeting. I, I can't imagine that this would be the difference between them doing summer hours or not. I think it's just yeah. going to be a matter of their maybe just make them aware that if they go ahead with this, mm -hmm. we may be looking for some some kind of a uh, uh, some something we would want to do. What in years? Maybe with, what we do to is prevent unintended consequences. Is maybe that maybe the assessment department wouldn't have the summer hours for a week, eight day, eight day. well, um, for, yeah, for the last week of January, yeah. um, something like that. So as to forestall any, any, I mean, I hate to see somebody coming in on a Friday afternoon thinking right, right, that yeah. they could drop off. I have the pavement and, uh, yeah. and they can't. Right. Um, we do in the, in the packet. So if someone comes to, to file, in the packet, there's specific instructions on how and where they need to file the application. So we do specify if you're delivering it, it must be here by 5 p.m. on this date. Okay, or are, you gonna, are you going to conform the, that that information each year, depending upon when yeah. the the summer hours impact? That is that is the plan to, to okay. modify the right. packet to be right. specific. I, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, the website also, when if they download it, mm -hmm. specifies when it needs to be. All I'm saying is, does it make sense? You know, I think it makes sense to communicate to whoever. It's probably the select board's office that's driving this. And I don't know. Well, we did. We we were the ones that approved the summer So when I was on the board uh, select. So I do have a question. As a board, if somebody it was due February first at twelve o'clock on Friday. And they didn't make it. They they were going to bring it in at three o'clock. Statutorily denied. Does the board have the ability to, uh, if the client puts up a fuss or protests it, do we have the ability to accept that? I will quote from the no. application itself. Okay. No, no. I will <laughs> quote from the when application. Yes, it's I'm fine. used to that. From the application itself which states these deadlines cannot be extended or waived by the assessors for okay. any reason. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Pretty clear. It's pretty. Right. pretty then pretty we need to clear. definitely have some sort of communication with who's ever in charge of this. It, yeah. the, it just needs to, our, our department needs to be, it needs to be considered in the discussion of yeah. extending the summer hours year round. And how it impacts, uh, and uh, for all we know, there are other departments that might have. Mm, mm -hmm. Teddy does, or Louise. Um, there's there, there's deadlines with yeah. election. Right, there are. Yeah, things like okay. that, like changing your party before you're Right. Your right. <laughs> <laughs> Is he in a run? Okay. And uh, for context, each year, regardless of the day of the week that it's filed, there are people that file late for. Abatements and for exemptions, and there are always people that file, late. and those people that file late then are statutorily denied. Right. Yeah. So right. my my point being that it doesn't seem to be related to what day of the week or what right. time. It seems right. that universally people I, I, do. I, and I guess it may be dealt with by when we send the tax bills out. Maybe one of the ways around this is the tax bills go out on January first. Is have some sort of an orange sheet that says abatement, yeah. abatement yeah. applicant, right? I do no later than you know mm -hmm. X date at this time. 
And, and we have too. There have been situations where people, I believe that happened this year. No, I take it. Where someone it. called, I just happened to be here after the time, yeah. and said, I came or I want to file my abatement application. And I said, you can't and deliver it because you passed the time. However, if you can find a post office that's open, it, as long as it's postmarked today, then you can get it. Mm -hmm. So if you look on USPS, there are post offices around here that are yeah. open till eight o'clock or whatever. Such station used to be 24. Really? Make, make your way, every, yeah. I'm not sure, every, uh, but trust me, before they did electronic filing, every patent lawyer knew where the 24-7 yes. post, post, <laughs> post office, yeah. or the midnight post office at least. And, and actually there are ways you can get postage online today yeah. and get a tracking number and, um, so, so, so okay. in, if you have a friend in California, you can email it to them. And have that, <laughs> that actually, somebody said that. Yeah, Someone yeah. said, "I have a friend in California. Could I email him the application? That, as heard, long as it's postmarked by that day." Someone yeah. doing that for a patent filing, and yeah. yet they couldn't do that. Like the taxes, our taxes in Massachusetts weren't due until April. Eight, it's 17th this year because, this, because right. the 15th was Patriot yeah. Day, the 16th yeah. was evacuation day, yeah. so it was due the 17th. But that's that's your domicile. So, right. your domicile so the follow up item if we want you to present something, we need as a board to get you something in writing. I think that would be appropriate yeah. to do. That. Okay. Are we prepared to? Uh, you're going to get, uh, is there any more information you need to get us? Um, the only thing I want to double check on is the date due for the bill because okay. this year would be why well, we add that to next week's agenda okay 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 there's no action by us no yes we just had a follow-up next week. right yeah and and then what we'll do is we'll take i, I like actually the best idea right I, I i like is adding a you know some bright orange notice in the tax bill on I january agree. 1st that says the due date for abatement for the due date for your taxes and any abatement requests are due on this right. date at this time. Well, this, I mean, this is the town's information, abatement information guide, and it does yes. say on or before Thursday, February 1 is shown by the postmark. These deadlines cannot be extended away by the assessors for any reason. It's all in bold. So. Right, but I think people are people might generally think that government offices are open till 5 p.m. Yeah. Okay. Right. I just want to make sure if there's any yeah. change to that, yeah, that if it happens to fall, the filing falls. On a Friday, right. and, and we're open at noon, that it be you, big. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, and the total cost for that announcement is like $800. Right. And to me, that's right. cheap. That's cheap. It's close to what? To put in a box slip, a little orange oh, oh, oh. slip. It's um, a nickel a piece. We're, um, and we're actually, um, there is restrictions in the statute about what you can put in and how you can put it in that any information i'm not an expert on this but what i recall was that any other slips anything else you put in the envelope is only allowed if it doesn't increase the postage that would otherwise it, have been it won't yeah. you have up just, to four sheets of paper yeah. that should go in yeah okay. okay um are we ready to move into executive executive session um I believe that's all we have for open session. Okay, but then we will be back to open session to announce the results of votes on exemption and or vacant applications. So I would ask for a motion to go into executive session to comply with the provisions of any general or special law specifically to discuss real estate and personal property exemption and or vacant applications, which are not open to public inspection. Or B, to comply with provisions of any general or special law specifically discussed for expense and property held for charitable purposes, which are not open to public inspection. Or C, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the government's litigating position. We will return to open session to announce the results of the vote of any exemption and or paper applications that were decided on during the executive session. Do I have that motion? So moved. Second. Roll call vote. Mike? Aye. Mike? Aye. John? Aye. Uh, we're in executive session. We out? Not yet. <clears throat>